Welcome back to another episode. My name is Darius Cousin, and today I want to ask and answer this one simple question. Why are Asians so good at math? Like what exactly makes them stand out? Are they smarter than us or is there some other reason that we just don't know about? Well, I'll stick around and find out. This episode is a little different than what I usually do because usually I always talk about history but this time I kind of wanted to do something different and just try to talk about something else. So here's me doing just that but don't worry there's still some history in this episode. So without further ado, welcome to Vlogs of Knowledge. So I just read a book and I'm a person that reads a lot of books but I kind of took a break for a few months so this was a nice change. The book is called Outliers, The Story of Success and really just looks at what makes somebody successful. Like what do some people become successful and others don't? Like what's the element? Is it hard work? Is it the environment? That's really what that book is all about. The book talks about the usual successful people like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, The Beatles but even goes as far to talk about why plane crashes happen. It's a very diverse book that really does a great job of explaining its arguments using very different topics. However, I never thought I would find a whole section dedicated to Asians, math, and rice. Like rice? Really? Now these things may seem like random things in a book about success, right? You're not going to expect to see rice in a book about success. But it turns out there's actually something to it. Rice, believe it or not, is actually the key to answering our questions. Why are Asians so good at math? I know it sounds weird, right? That's exactly what I thought too. But then I did some research. There's no denying that there's a strong stereotype with Asians being good at math. Like it's not to be racist or to make fun of them. It's just the way things are. They seem to be really good at math and their parents seem to be very strict about it. Like when I was in school, they were the ones who would often get the highest grades. But it kind of seems like we take this for granted. Like has anyone ever stopped to think why these Asians are so good at math? Like is it because they're smarter? Is it their genetics? Did they evolve differently? Like these are all valid questions and it turns out that none of them are true. So then what exactly makes Asians better at math? Well, for that, we have to go back and just look a little bit at their history. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm only going to talk about the Chinese because they were the most influential. But really, this applies to most Asians. And by the way, when I say we're going back, I really mean we're going back. Like we're going back to the year 10,000 BC. That's a very long time ago. It's really where everything got started. As we talked about in the video that I did about the Bronze Age, the year 10,000 BC is usually when most cultures discovered agriculture. And what's specifically interesting about that is that not every single culture got it around the same time. Like they all just kind of did their own thing and discovered it around the same two or three thousand year period. Like first it was the Chinese, then it was the Mesopotamians, and eventually it was the Egyptians. And because each of these cultures are on different territories, they all took agriculture and just really adapted it to their location. For example, the Mesopotamians, they grew wheat. The Egyptians, they grew a lot of flax. And the Chinese, well, they grew rice. And it's this fundamental difference in the crops that they grew that is responsible for Asians being better at math. Now I know what you're thinking. How can agriculture be possibly related to people being better at math? Trust me, I thought the same thing, but I think you're gonna like the answer. Rice is not your ordinary crop. Like if you look at a rice farm compared to a wheat farm for example, they are totally different. Like they work differently and you have to work on them differently to get a good harvest. And it's that difference in work that is ultimately going to be the key in our story. If you take a standard normal western wheat farm, well it's pretty simple, right? Like in the spring you plant your crops and then you harvest them in the fall. As long as it rains every, I don't know, a few days and that the sun is still shining, you can expect to get a good harvest without that much work. And if you want to harvest more, well you just buy more land, buy more equipment and plant more seeds. That's how you're going to harvest a lot more. In the winter you don't really work and in the summer you kind of take it easy like it's really simple doesn't require that much thought and it's pretty basic and when the soil is no longer fertile you just move on to a different farm. Rice farms however they're different they're not that big they require a lot more work and there's a direct correlation between the amount of work that you put into the amount of crops that you can harvest. And also rice is grown on the water which means that the water can absorb the nutrients and just give them back to the ground so the ground actually ends up becoming more fertile the more you use it. So while the Chinese and the rest of the population all discovered agriculture relatively at the same time, already from the beginning there was a fundamental difference. The Chinese since the beginning had to work a lot harder than anybody else and that hard work eventually became part of their culture. The fact that a rice farm is a lot smaller than a wheat farm really forced the Chinese to make the best use out of the limited space. Instead of taking the easy way out which was to get more land which often they could not do, they had to find intricate ways to fit as much rice as possible in the existing land that they had. Like that's a very hard thing to do. This really helped the Chinese develop a sense of problem solving skills that wasn't really required anywhere else. Like it's really easy when all you have to do is just to buy more land like it's a lot harder when you have to really think and just how can I make the most out of this land that I have like I can't buy anything else 
I'm stuck making the most of this. Like that's a totally different experience. And also, like I said, rice is a lot harder to grow than wheat. Rice is grown underwater. That meant that the Chinese had to develop some ridiculously complex irrigation systems to just really control the water in their fields. But guys, this was the year 10,000 BC. Like water only came from rain or from the river. Like they were ingenious. And not only did you have to control the water level, but you also had to control the water temperature for it to be constant during the entire growing season. If the temperature was a little off or the water level wasn't just right, your entire harvest could be at stake and that's really unacceptable in a culture that really depends on rice for their survival. In a rice farm, you actually had to spend a lot of time to make sure that you were doing everything properly. Like the more time you spent, the better your harvest was gonna be. So already from the beginning, the Chinese were already learning that hard work was going to equal a good harvest. You often had to be bent over under the hot sun, just really making sure that you were not making any mistakes. Like this was a very delicate job. But then you also had to deal with the water, right? Like you had to make sure the water temperature was fine and that the water level was okay too. Like this was an everyday job that often required you to wake up at 5 a.m. just to make the most out of your day. Now how does that compare to the western farm where you really just have to plant in the spring and wait for the environment to do its thing and then just reap the harvest in the fall? Now of course there's a lot more to it than that. I was really just oversimplifying things but still it doesn't compare to a rice farm. Like it's from there, from those beginnings, that China really started to become different. Having this association between hard work and success at such an early time eventually became part of Chinese culture. It didn't only apply to farming anymore. Like it started to apply to more general things like, I don't know, school. Like if you look at the amount of hours that a Chinese spent and studying compared to an American, the difference is striking. Like on the surface, they might be identical. Like they might go to the same school, have the same curriculum, and even have the same friends. But at home, those cultural differences, they really start to show. The Chinese are often doing a lot more work than others simply because they were raised in a culture where the more you work, the more you succeed. The Americans, unfortunately, they learned a different lesson. They learned that success was not really about what you can do, but more about what the environment can do for you. They never really learned that hard work is going to equal success. Like looking at Western agriculture, you're kind of forced to take breaks. Like in the winter, you just can't grow anything. Like the Europeans in the Middle Ages during winter, they kind of just hibernated. They waited until the next growing season. And when you have a whole society based on agriculture where you have to take breaks for thousands of years, well, how is that going to affect you? How is that going to affect your culture? Well, it's obviously gonna be different than the Chinese. You're gonna wanna take breaks, you're gonna wanna become lazy and just not really put that much effort into anything that you do. Which is why in any American school, for example, we have long summer breaks. Like we were built, we were educated to believe that breaks are a part of success. But the Chinese, well, they're showing us otherwise. Can you guess what the Chinese are doing in their long summer breaks? Like they're really grinding hard like they've been doing for the past 10,000 years. Like they're just getting ahead. They're learning constantly, they're improving their knowledge, and they're really just practicing their skills. While the rest of us, well, we're going to the pool, we're going to the beach, and really just enjoying our time off. So then is it really a surprise that they're so good at math? Like it's not like there's a secret formula or that they're smarter. They just put in a lot more hours than we do. And as we've seen, those hours do not only matter on rice. They also matter in life, in school, and really just in everything. Thing. If you want to become good at anything, you have to put in the hours. If you look at all the successful people in our history, all of them got there through hard work. Like there's not one person that really just didn't do anything and just became successful. Like success takes work. Try to find one person in your life that's really successful but really hasn't done any work to get there. Like there's none. Like you have to work hard to become successful. And once you learn that, your entire life changes. Like the Chinese, they were right. And that my friends is why Asians are so good at math. Like there's no secret. There's nothing that's being hidden from you. Like it's just work. You just have to put in the hours. And that's it for this episode. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it, even though it was a little bit different, even though there was a little less history than usual. If you did enjoy it, please leave it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And of course, if you subscribe, it also does help me out a lot because it shows me that you enjoy my content. And instead of having three questions like we have every week, I just have one question this time. What do you think about this new type of episode? What do you think about episodes that aren't necessarily as focused on history as usual, but still are quite rather interesting? Please do let me know, leave me a comment. I would love to read them all and of course answer them all. And if you do, you might get featured in next week's video as a fan of the week. So it's really a win-win for everybody. As you know, and as I say at the end of every video, I haven't talked about everything and the things that I did talk about, well, I haven't gone into too much detail. That's actually okay. I'm doing this on purpose because I want you guys to go out and research on your own. My name has been Darius Cos and it's been an absolute pleasure. You can find me on social media. My links will be in the description and I'll see you all next week.